Quiet on the set. Lights. Camera. Action. Take one. Scene one. <laughs> I love it. Welcome to the Culture Zone. And today I get a chance to pretend. Today I get a chance to pretend to be an animator, pretend to be a Hollywood film producer, director, and of course, an actor. Of course, I pretend that all the time. This is my show and I'm gonna do it the way I want to, but guess what? Today we're gonna talk to a real animator, somebody who knows about all of this. This is all filmmaking, but it's all right. We're gonna do animation today. And speaking of animation, do you remember when you were little and you used to draw on your exercise book? Yes, the same exercise book that you should be studying your times table and doing your homework. No man, I was a big artist back in my time. So I used to draw the stick lady and then I draw another stick lady doing the action. And then I roll the front leaf of the exercise book and watch me now. And voila, my lady was dancing. Little did I know that was called animation but it's okay. We're gonna find out more about how that process works and talk to somebody who really knows the world of animation. So don't go anywhere, stay with us. You are in the culture zone. The customs, the practice, the language, the beliefs, the religion, the style in fashion, the food, and of course the performing arts. Welcome to the culture zone. The Culture Zone is brought to you by Danvers Nursing Institute. Are you struggling in your nursing courses? Do you want to be successful on your exit exam? Do you want to pass the NCLEX? Then let Danvers Nursing Institute help you get prepared. Our affordable courses are designed to assist nursing students in understanding difficult concepts and passing their exams. Our courses are designed in micro video lecture format. Micro video lecture are short video recordings on a specific topic. The benefits of the micro video lectures are, one, can be watched and listened to at any time and anywhere. Two, nursing students can rewatch the recording as many times as they would like. Three, one topic or concept is covered at a time, making it easier to grasp the information. In addition to the micro video lectures, you will have NCLEX style questions with rationale to evaluate your understanding of the content. Sign up now for only $49.99 a month. www.danversnursinginstitute.com it feels so good to pretend. It feels so good to really be taken into another dimension, another world. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be talking with Kevin Jackson, who knows how to do just that. He is a film director, educator, lecturing in the film, digital media, and animation, writer, award-winning 2D animator, and past head of the Jamaica Animation Association. The brilliant animator is currently director at Night Vision Media Limited and film director at Enhanced Realism Studio. Come, let us hear about the world of the imagination. Let us hear from my guest, Kevin Jackson. I've spoken to people in all different aspects of, uh, of life, career, yes. entertainment, performing arts of different sorts and visual artists. And many, many people cross my path and have come into my zone, but I've never met one who goes by the name of an animator. So I, I hear you, script writing, 2D character design, 2D animation, directing, production, management, storyboarding, and the list goes on. So you're a man of the rock, a man of the soil, coming from the tiny island of Jamaica. What made yes. you decide to go into this big world of animation? A word that most of my average Jamaican doesn't even understand except when they're being dramatic and somebody might say you're being animated but this right. field this aspect of this career what made you what spurred you my brother all right so when i was really really young my parents they told me that you know i was crying all the time and the only way they could get me to stop was to just plop me in front of the tv so i really you know loved watching tv shows whether movie tv series cartoon whatever it was i was just fascinated by storytelling of all kinds and I used to draw all the time, draw in the back of my exercise book till all the teacher used to beat me and say I need to focus on schoolwork. And, you know, drawing was always a part of my life up until like mid high school. And uh, the reason I said mid high school was because at a certain point we had to choose our subjects when we we're going into CXC. And then the problem with that now was 
you know, everybody's just encouraging you, no, don't do the arts, you know, you're going to become a broke artist, focus on the sciences or the business and that sort of thing. And as you're trying to choose, boy, art or history, this or that, and I was like, boy, all right. I, it just, so I just kind of pushed art away. Anyway, later on in life, went to university, um, studied electronics, studied computer science, graduated with a, a degree in computer science, started working, was a programmer and database administrator for about 15 years. And then when I was about 27, I said to myself, no, man, this can't be it. This can't be it because this, this programming thing boring. I can't deal with this. And I said, all right, I give it myself. At the time, I was very fascinated with the film and I used to like to write. From I started working, I was writing because one of the interns was bored and never have nothing to do. And I said, all right, I'm going to write a story and you edit it. And from that, I just never stopped writing. So I said, all right, I've given myself three years to break into this film industry as a writer. And I write and I write and I write and everybody loved the writing and they, they want to use it for this and they want to use it for that, but they never want to pay. And I said, boy, this writing thing not working out. And it was just drawing closer to 30. And I said, dogs, I don't want to stay in this, this corporate world forever. You know? And then eventually I met up with a guy named Robin Chin who took me on as a writer at first and he showed me the ropes in just all sorts of filmmaking aspects, you know, editing and recording, etc. And I met a lot of other people in the film industry like Tanya Taylor, who she coincidentally, because she saw my passion, she actually hired me as a PA on the set of America's Next Top Model, Cycle 19, that was in Jamaica. And that just opened my world because I got to see filmmaking on a professional level and I said, oh, this is what it is like. I'm liking this, this, this field. Anyway, over time now, Jampro had a seminar. This was in combination with Canadian Embassy and it was about animation. And I said, you know, I used to draw and I used to love cartoons. Let me go to this conference and see what it's all about. And I went, and when I went, you know, they, they were saying that, oh, animation is so much easier now because of the computer. Anybody can do it, it's easy. And I said, all right. I'm going to go get some animation software and I'm going to go animate. Well, it was not easy. It was not easy at all. It is very, very hard. And honestly speaking, I almost gave up after the first year because I said, no, sir, this is too much work. <laughs> Just go back to stick to filmmaking. But a competition came up called Anime Caribe, which is Caribbean's biggest animation festival. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, I'm going to animate something for this. And I would literally come home every day and spend at least two hours working on this story that I had. To the point where even friends called me and said, hey, Kevin, let's go. We're going to this bar. We're going to the movies. Or I said, no, I can't. I have this thing to do. And I managed to finish the animation and enter it in the competition. Didn't, didn't win anything, but I was proud that I finished this animation. And I kept on animating because there was so much to learn. And I would animate and post on social media, animate posts on social media. And then one day, I, one of my friends messaged me on, on Facebook and said, hey, um, there is a friend of mine looking for an animator. Um, I think you should call her and, and talk to her. So I said, well, I'm not good enough yet. I'm just learning. And he said, oh, OK, but I see you posting all the time. I said, yeah, but those are just little things I learned here and there. And whatever. And he said, well, go and talk to her anyway. I started to look for other animators to see if they could help this lady and couldn't find anybody. And then my friend said, so why you don't just do it? And I said, why? I don't know. He said, it's better she tell you no than you tell yourself no, you know? And when he said that, I said, hmm, that's a good point. So I went down, this was Jamaica Environment Trust. So I went down to Jamaica Environment Trust and I showed them my animations and they were looking through it. And then they saw one in particular that they liked. And I said, oh, we like this style. Can you animate this in this style? And at the time it was about Boat Island. Can be. Then came a politician and lick him out the tree for Goat Islands. Uh, and them one with Goat Islands. Whoa, I miss a two little fishy swimming in the sea. Along came a bigger ship and lick him off the reef for Goat Islands. Don't mess with Goat Islands. From that point on, I started to get more animation jobs and more. And in fact, that was probably 2011 or 12. 
And Jamaica Environment Trust is still my client to this day. I'm actually working on an animation for them right now. Mm-hmm. You know, so pretty much that's how it, it started. And then I, I gained some other successes over time where um, I animated another short called Abik on the Maroons, mm-hmm. which I, I have to big up my friend Shevani Sheva's wife. She owns a company called Night Vision Media mm-hmm. that, I, that I work with from time to time. And uh, she was the one who kept pushing me, saying, come man, hurry up and finish the short, hurry up and finish the short. And she pulled this trick on me where she said, when do you think you're going to be finished? So I said, boy, I think I should be finished around August. Okay, no problem. I'm going to plan a launch for August. I didn't take her seriously. Yeah. Till I started getting emails saying, okay, the launch is so and so and so. Observer is going to be there and Dina is going to be there. And I said, wait, what? This thing is really happening? And she said, yes, I told her that it was happening in August. And I had to literally stay up all night working on this thing to finish it. And finished it, showed it to, I think it was more than 100 people. And everybody liked it. And it, it has actually gone on to win about six awards so far. Um, three at the Lignum Vitae Film Festival, which is a festival based in Mandible. Uh, one at Gatfest Film Festival. One at Columbus Black International Film Festival in Ohio. And another one, it, it came... It came, what was it, second place in Film Olympiad, which is a festival in Greece. (laughs) You're fast, but not fast enough. Beyond that, I've I've given back to the community by being a part of the association, the Jamaica Animation Nation Network, where I started off as their community development manager mm-hmm. and then eventually became president in 2014 and only stepped down from presidency um, January of this year, you now run by Sherry Peart. But just through that association alone, you know, we've managed to pull other animators together to, you know, network, collaborate. Um, we've, you know, had talks with the government in terms of, you know, different policies and, you know, um, curriculum development. So talk to yes. me a little bit about how you work with the, the, the students in Jamaica. Sounds like you're doing something besides just your yeah. own projects, but you're actively working with making sure the younger generation gets uh, into this particular field. Oh, most definitely, mm-hmm. most definitely. Mm-hmm. So I lecture in animation at Heart BTDI, which is a vocational um, training institute. It's, it stands for Vocational Training and Development Institute. Mm-hmm. I also teach animation at the University of the West Indies and some film, film programs as well. So I teach experimental film and um, there's a course that has to do with like a little bit of I wouldn't call it visual effects, but it's more on the line of compositing. Mm -hmm. So I teach those courses, 2D animation courses, script writing courses. And uh, yeah, I've been mentoring quite a lot of students. You know, you get to see all this talent. I mean, when I tell you it's a talent, they're Jamaica. I I tell people all the while, I am by far not the best animator in Jamaica. There are some animators that will make your jaw drop Drop. in Jamaica. And let me sit up straight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man. And character designers out there. And. You know, it's exciting to see these upcoming students because you get a glimpse of what the future of animation is going to look like in Jamaica. That is what and is I mean, exciting. Yes. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm terribly... Like, I know for sure I'm going to have to take a back seat and just become their managers because I can't compete with them. Eventually. You know, drawing for drawing. I can't. Eventually, so eventually. That's why I'm currently doing a master's in media management because yes. I have to go... You know, I forgot to take a step back and make them do them too. Um, yeah. My son is also an avid animator in his own right. He has always loved that. And I guess I'm going to take the pat on my shoulder for putting him in front of the TV too, because that mm. needs to keep him calm. But it's, it's really great, your journey, what you're doing. And of course, there's more work to be done, even though you're yeah, saying yeah, you yeah, might yeah. just take a backseat to the youth. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. When I, I say backseat, you know, yeah. I'm still creating. It's just that. 
they are going to be the ones to, the to you know produce those those lovely illustrations yes. and animations because they, they are super super talented i can and imagine they need somebody to manage them so i will i, I will do the management. i i, I can I, I just see you and them i like the, if, if you don't have on the beard them say you're one of them you look like a youth yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <But> it, it, <laughs> you. it's great yeah um i remember as a child though i would draw something on a an exercise book because everybody seemed to be mm-hmm. working with their mm-hmm. exercise book yeah. um and I would make draw something on a page, one page, and then draw it on the second page, and I'd yeah, flip man. it back and forth, and that was the the, <laughs> the most. Is, no, but let me tell you something. That is how animation started. That is Hello. traditional. And when you hear somebody ask about traditional animation, that is traditional animation. This day they used to draw on a piece of paper and then draw the next one and then flip back and forth, back yeah, and forth yeah. to get the movement right. So, and in fact, even when I'm teaching students, that's one of the exercises they have to do. Yes. You know, it is a very, it is, it is a very fundamental, fundamental exercise. See? And See? kids do it naturally, you know? Yes. It's amazing. Amazing. So you're an inspiration to many that will be watching and for parents to realize that it doesn't appear to be a traditional field of animation no, like what we not. always know everybody want dr laya um indian chief but you have right. done something different and i know your journey you explained that you did something before you moved into the animation right. because chances are at that time it probably wasn't even highly recognized no but, it, it wasn't at all it never really existed you know it's, anybody who did it did it yeah. on their own on their they own as a, their as, own a own as a passion Right. Now it's in the University of the West Indies as right. a part of the curriculum, which is yes. how, this is why I keep repeating that because I'm so amazed and so happy. And, for the and forward let me thinking. just and let me just expand that a bit. It's available at the University of the West Indies, Heart BTDI, University of Technology, Edna Manley, um, and um, Excelsior. So it's it's all over the place. There are many, wow. and even in Cape, in CXC Cape, they have animation and and game design as a course, in, not in every high school, but in some high schools. So kids can get into it as early as high school. So that is awesome. You mentioned too, that you're not only doing average animation, but you do things for the government that is um, that can be up- uplifting, uh, enhancing mm-hmm. our lives yes. in, in the country. Think, right. Uh, animation that will really teach or uh, show us the better way. Victim Services Division presents Abduction. Hey girl, come in at the car. Ah! Help! Help! Yo, my car go on. <laughs> Samantha? <laughs> Samantha? Why are you hiding in here? Someone tried to take me away. Come. Your daughter was almost abducted today, but she was smart. She ran away. However, there is more she could have done. Walking with headphones on is a dangerous habit. You must be alert. Pay attention to your surroundings and the dangers around you. When you are not paying attention, you are more vulnerable to attack. Avoid unmarked taxis. Avoid walking by yourself. It is safer to walk in a group. It offers more protection. Avoid dangerous or lonely roads. If you are in danger, attract attention. Make a scene. Scream as loud as you can and run to open spaces with a lot of people. For even more safety tips, call the Victim Services Division. They will also provide counseling for her to cope with this traumatic ordeal. Basically, just trying to raise awareness as as best as possible. Sometimes we don't get to do it the way we want to do it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because somebody's hiring you, so they kind of tell you how they want it to be done. Yes. And it does hurt sometimes as a creative because the thing about it is 
on one hand, your client wants to get a message out. Yes. But on the other hand, you know, especially because I study communication through my media management program, you know that communication not only requires sending a message, it requires receiving the message. Correct. If the message was not received, then it was not communicated. Correct. And a lot of times the way in which the story unfolds, the audience may not receive it as well as you'd want it to. You know, like they kind of see it and they go, oh, that's a fairy tale or oh, whatever, you know. Yeah. I kind of like to try to be a bit more real to what people experience because I think they'll be able to relate to it more. Right. And I think you had mentioned earlier um, the, the COVID testing animation. Yes, that in I the did. green room we did. Yes. Mava, what's a way you say that I go a foreign? Then calling me to go up at the airport, girl, and them turn me back coming on a COVID test. Then Mava, you never know say you need for the COVID test for go a foreign. Yes, my love. You need to go up at a good up place. Uh, 3D Gynecology Rapid Testing yeah, Center. Uh, 23 Tangerine Place. Uh, then not dig up nose at up there. Then them the part Instagram. Yes, good. Mm -hmm. Why I like that animation particularly was because of the patwa in it. Yes, real. Right? Yeah, oh, man. And I, where they're at. Right. And a lot of people could relate to it because of the, of the patwa. You know, that helped them to kind of cling to it more rather than something in standard English that they're not going to readily listen to because it just sounds like every other ad out there, you know? So really like those ads where we can communicate to people the way they, 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 they already communicate. And you know? can resonate with them. Yeah. So doing social, right. social issues, you're addressing many, many things that are happening in a, and around the landscape at the time. So that's awesome. You're doing good right. stuff. Mm -hmm. I am so happy to have you in the space. I would sit here and just talk with you all day and just absorb all that you're saying. But for my viewers, where can they get more or learn more about Mr. Kevin Jackson? My social media handle is Nivek Pro Animations. It's pretty much on any platform, N-I-V-E-K-P-R-O animations Nivek pro yeah. animations mm -hmm. yeah. awesome sauce as we say in the media world this is absolutely amazing i say that a lot to my guests that come into the zone and i'm really thrilled thrilled that you took the time out of your busy schedule because it sounds like you're doing a lot but thank you for sitting with us and thank you so much for giving the young people that encouragement and just holding them up and letting them know this is a passion this is an interest yeah. There is work to be done and it can take you to the next level. It's not just monkeying yes. around and drawing, you know, the, you know uh, no, what do you call it? The exercise book. Stop no. drawing, pick up your book. No, they're doing something that yeah, is man. going to make a difference. And that's yes. great. So yes. any parting words, my brother, because we're going to wrap, but we're going to dig into you some more. We're going to really get to learn more about you. My mm. viewers are going to really, really be delving into you some more. But talk to me mm. a little bit as we say wrap up for now mm -hmm. um my well to wrap up what i would just love to say is you know uh, pursue your passion i'm a strong believer that if the education system was set up in a way to enhance your particular particular skills and passion we would have less crime because people would find their place sooner right when we try to fit round pegs into a square hole we end up with problems people can't figure out where they fit and hence they just become you know, agitated and push out that frustration on everybody else. So don't push everybody to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer. Some people want to be a sculptor. Some people want to be an animator. Some people want to be a musician or a dancer. Encourage it, right? We look on dancing and we think it's just people who want to just jump up and down and enjoy themselves and then can't make no money from it. And somebody from Japan and Belgium and Sweden fly down here, learn what we learn, what we know, and go back and create a course in a university and making millions of dollars. So don't underestimate our culture. Don't underestimate our creativity. It can make money. It's just about ensuring that when you're creating your artists, you also teach them business so they know how to transform the art into a business. Absolutely. That is my word. I love that parting word. And I remember Aunt Oliver Samuel saying, had he known how to create his talent into a business, the business aspect of it, it would have been much better. But he still mm -hmm. had fun doing it. So thank you so much, Mr. Kevin Jackson. Again, it's been real, it's been great. I'm excited about the animation. <laughs> You're very I'm, animated yourself. You I am. I told animation. you that. I'm very animated. <laughs> so yes, I'm. I'm. 
<laughs> I'm one of the cartoon creatures. But thanks again for stopping by the culture. All zone. right. Walk good, my brother. And it's been real. Peace out. All right. Peace Take out. care. All right. All right. Tomorrow, how comes I didn't see you at school today? Hi, Melissa. Daddy say I can't go to school until I spray the plants and rake up the yard. But Kemar, that is illegal. Your parents not supposed to let you miss school to do work. It's not work, it's chores. It's not illegal to do chores, but if your daddy makes you miss school to do the chores, then that is illegal. Especially if you're spraying toxic chemicals. Parents, it is okay for your children to do light chores around the house and help in family business. But it is illegal to make your child miss school to do so. It is also illegal to make them use dangerous chemicals, heavy machinery and work in hazardous situations. If you are found guilty, you can do time in prison. If you know a child working illegally, call the necessary authorities. For more information, visit the ministry's website at www.mlss.gov.jm or call 876-922-9500-14. To report child labor, please call 888-PROTECT, 888-776-8328. And that's a wrap. It was so good talking with Kevin Jackson. And what I realized is that he lets you know that doing your little drawings is always the beginning to something great. Don't stop drawing. Don't stop thinking and imagining. This is absolutely great. But anyway, it's time for me to head on over to my cast party. Yes, although they're cartoon creatures, I can pretend. Leave me alone. So until next time we go into the culture zone, I'll see you what good and be good. Keep drawing. The Culture Zone is brought to you by Danvers Nursing Institute. Hi, there we have it. Are you struggling in your nursing courses? Do you want to be successful on your exit exam? Do you want to pass the NCLEX? Then let Danvers Nursing Institute help you get prepared. Our affordable courses are designed to assist nursing students in understanding difficult concepts and passing their exams. Our courses are designed in micro video lecture format. Micro video lecture are short video recordings on a specific topic. The benefits of the micro video lectures are, one, can be watched and listened to at any time and anywhere. Two, nursing students can rewatch the recording as many times as they would like. Three, one topic or concept is covered at a time, making it easier to grasp the information. In addition to the micro video lectures, you will have NCLEX style questions with rationale to evaluate your understanding of the content. Sign up now for only $49.99 a month. www.danversnursinginstitute.com <laughs>